shovel after shovel. Scoop after scoop. Construction crews near Chinook, Washington slowly turn an historic tidal wetland in the Columbia River estuary into a new home for young salmon and steelhead. This one's coming in low. They want you out of the way. The crews install an enormous 70 foot long by 12 foot wide concrete culvert, complete with a natural stream bottom beneath Highway 101. Once finished, the culvert will reopen water access underneath the roadway so Columbia River Tidewater can once again help young salmon swim into this 96-acre marsh. The historic tidal wetland was first detailed on the maps of explorers Lewis and Clark, but a railroad in the 1890s and later Highway 101 cut the wetland off from the river. So for the last century, the only water that flowed from the wetland to the Columbia was through this tiny concrete culvert, which had no fish passage at all. I'm very excited about this project because it helps make the estuary more natural for people who now live here and for the fish, birds. Ecology experts from the Columbia River Estuary Study Task Force, or CREST, are in charge of construction. They believe the wetlands' shallow waters will provide a place for juvenile salmon to rest eat and grow. One of the things science is saying to us right now is that these wetland habitats are very important for eating patterns so that they get larger, it just basically a snack bar for the, for the juveniles. To complete the project, crews built a 12 foot high by 80 foot long coffer dam to keep the waters of the river out during construction. They also placed root wads and large woody debris inside the wetland and reshaped the opening so tide water can more easily flow in and out of the marsh. Scientists say they now realize habitat such as this is important for young fish to transition from fresh water to salt. Size has an implication for survival when they get to the ocean. So one of these, the goals of this project is to provide them with another food source. The Bonneville Power Administration provided a large chunk of the funding and helped manage the project. BPA fisheries biologist John Bacher says the latest scientific research shows restoring tidal wetlands such as this may be critical to threatened and endangered salmon and steelhead. Yeah, I mean, well, there's tens of thousands that come through the Columbia River and then all the fish in, from uh, the entire basin are coming through here, so it's possible that any one of them, or all of them, could touch this. Yep, there's a salmon. Okay. okay. So we got a salmon. An early results show the project, which was just completed in February, is working. I'm guessing the little ones are the chum fry, and that bigger one may have been a coho. We'll have to look. Already, researchers have found coho, chum, and chinook salmon using the tidal marsh. Here's a salmon measuring 39 millimeters. Another chinook bigger Chinook here. It, it is really exciting to see the project come to fruition and we're seeing a relatively large initial success here. We still can't really um, determine that this project has been effective until we do this some years to come. The coho. Positive results such as these are proof that cooperation between government agencies and their partners can work. I think it's a matter of, of people working together, and salmon are the beneficiaries in this case. Well, scientists estimate that little more than one-third of the Columbia River's wetlands that were here when Lewis and Clark explored still exist today. For its part, Bonneville Power promises to improve more tidal marshes in the river's estuary because they could be vital for salmon and steelhead. For Bonneville Power, I'm David Wilson.